So this clothing brand does millions of dollars per year, quite a bit of money, but doesn't have the best engagement or a large amount of followers. And that's because the way clothing brands are growing is completely changing in front of our eyes right now. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly see growth for your brand, how this new approach actually works, and the key differences between this and what everyone else is doing and telling you about on the internet right now. And no, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to make this work. Actually, you can do it for free. Coming up with a name, designing your product, buying from markets, whatever it is, those may seem like they're more important, but they're not more important than actually making money. And making money starts with profit. Email and SMS. And so hear me out before we get too far into this. I just want to tell you that this will all start to make a little bit more sense. And it's going to be a little controversial, maybe counterintuitive to the way that I'm going to approach these. But I promise you that they will all start to make sense as I'm explaining this guide here. So email and SMS are where you will make back the margins in your business. Most clothing stores never give themselves a chance to grow because they copy and paste their competitors' prices. Or if you're a boutique, what you've done is other people tell you to mark it up two times or three times, and so you just think that's enough margin to make it work for your brain because everybody else has done that. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But healthy brands have healthy margins. Honestly, we were, so we were talking to a guy over this last weekend. He actually met up with us here in person. He's a member of one of our programs. And he was talking about it. He's like, look, before joining this program or years ago, I just didn't have the margin. So I could never do an offer or a giveaway or, you know, handle anything from a customer. Or if I ever ran into any issues, I never have any margins in the business. So my business never grew. You have two ways that you can create healthy margins in your business. Number one, profit on the front end or the back end. Let me explain. So the front end, if you have enough margin, I would love you to be above 60%, 70%, 80, 90, 120% margin. If you can, a great quality product can, I would say, warrant those margins as well. Now, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail, but you can do profit margin on the front end, where those make sense, or on the back end. And the back end happens when you get a repeat customer, meaning that you acquired them at a break-even point, which is completely fine. Um, you know, people who are just starting out, they may not have the profit on the front end. I would like for you to, but maybe it's just a break-even. You spend 10, you make 10. But then that customer comes back and spins from you again, and that's where you make up the margin. That happens through email and SMS, because they're the most profitable ways to get back in front of a customer where it costs you pennies if not less to get in front of that person to get them to make a purchase a second or third time if you do not have that margin it's very difficult to grow a business no matter what people say gross numbers the people who throw money on the beds or the people who have the lambos or all of those things those are gross margin people they're revenue they're selling a lifestyle that sounds amazing okay and i'm not saying it doesn't sound amazing but you have to have net profit net profits the actual money that you get to have in your bank account not the amount that chase is willing to loan you or your bank is willing to loan you it's actual net profit where you have a actual business that will stand the test of time to build an actual brand not just sell products and as you can tell I've talked to a lot of people who end up creating brands that are not profitable and then have to shut them down because they forgot one of the most important parts of their business, margins. Even if you have the best margins in the world, if you do not know your audience, you will not sell at a profit. To give context, I think that people can sell products at a profit with good margins if they don't know their audience, but they will never build an actual brand. For example, last night, the, the Chiefs have won the Super Bowl, so it gives you kind of a context of this. Maybe, who knows, you're watching this in the future, and Chiefs won more Super Bowls. Love them or hate them, doesn't matter anyway. I've been a fan of my, my whole life, so it's been fun to see and actually win. But what is out there is a bunch of generic content or people, like you've probably seen if you watched the Super Bowl or if you're aware of it, like there's a gray t-shirt with just a, a design that says Super Bowl champions, okay? Those are people who are selling products. But then you have actual brands who know the ins and outs of the actual person who they are trying to sell to. They know the specifics of them and so they can create shirts and content around those products and they actually sell more of them. This brand knows their audience, they know me and they know what I'm looking for. So the brand's actually called Breezy Excursions. I'll give them a shout out. Hey, and if you guys are watching this, cool, I'd love to have you on the podcast, tell your story. But what they do is they create really dope designs. They have a theme for the designs. They know exactly who they're talking to with their audience and they did something very, very clear, which is I'm going to still focus on not only my customer, but on brand for what I have, but they're going to go into the details of creating a high quality product. So it's literally a trifecta of a brand that people want to be around and 
more so want to buy from. Finding your audience is simple though. It's, it's always coming down to the messaging, right? The message that we're talking about between you and I right now, you want to find out what the mass desire is. For example, let's go in kind of a, an, an inception route here. Your mass desire, the person on the other side of here that I'm assuming at this point, is that you are a clothing brand, either a boutique or a streetwear brand, you started your own private label, whatever it is, you're selling clothes or accessories or something of that sort, and you are trying to grow online. Your mass desire is that you want to grow your brand because of family, time, freedom, whatever it is, right? That may be your desire. And so we create content for you for that. But you need to find out what that desire is for your audience and go from there. And this is why you are often your own avatar, meaning you're your own customer. You're the person who is solving the problem for yourself. If you get nothing from this video, I hope that this part is clear because I think it will really help you grow your brand. You need to ask yourself a series of questions to help you define your avatar yourself so that you can speak to your potential customers and cut through a lot of the noise. Okay, so a couple of things that you want to find out for your struggling avatar. And honestly, more importantly, you need to find out for yourself. What are your core values? What are your identities? Are you a Christian? Are you involved in certain aspects of sports? Do you find your identity in sports? Do you find your identity in the Chiefs? Whatever it is, so you define your identity. You identify your core values, your experience, your knowing. What do you know about it? So if we dive deep into the Chiefs example here, right, their experience you're knowing, if you know the players and stats really well, well, then you may be a brand who's solving a unique problem or mass desire for somebody who goes deeper into it versus just surface level. Going a little bit into the weeds, oh, this will make sense, I promise. And then your past struggles. So what were the problems that you had before? Now, going back to like a boutique example, maybe you couldn't find affordable clothing that fit you right, maybe after having kids, or maybe after high school, you couldn't find clothes that really like were business class or business casual, whatever it is, right? There is a problem that you had. And then the last one is that, like I said, you'll define that you are actually your avatar, meaning you are your actual customer. This piece, this part is very, very important. And it's the reason why people in this day and age, 2024 and beyond will find success because they will put in the work, the time, the effort. And if you need to rewatch this section, I would highly suggest that. But if you can define your audience, it'll make a lot of sense. I'm gonna give you three things that really, I would say are beginning, the middle, the end to creating your actual customer. And I think that you guys are actually asking about this. You've, people have said, hey, let's do some messaging videos. And if you do want that, you can comment the word messaging below. And this will really be kind of the beginning of a much longer version of a comp piece of content that will dive deeper into it. But again, to kind of come back to this audience focus. Number one is a struggling avatar. You have the problem, you have a solution, which is your brand, whether you're the boutique and you're trying to find affordable clothing that fits well for that woman, or if you are a streetwear brand and you're trying to represent certain identity. For example, the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Like that would be the identity. I'm going to buy a shirt today. I'm just seeking out. I'm probably gonna buy it from Breezy Excursions. Go and buy for them as well. Again, no affiliate. but. The point is there is a unique solution. They're creating really dope, really cool designs that nobody else has, which I like. And then the future pace here, what's gonna happen afterwards? I feel better about celebrating my team in a unique way and other people are going to comment on my shirt because I've bought from them or purchased from them before and I've gotten a lot of comments on it. So that's also nice. Same thing for what's life afterwards whenever you are the boutique owner, when you can buy something that you can actually afford and it looks good and it fits you well, you have dopamine going like crazy. You feel better about yourself and that completely changes everything. So you need to go in and I say need to, I would highly suggest for you to go in and find out what the problem is for your customer, define your unique solution. And then what is life like afterwards? Is this easy? No, by no means is it easy. But again, the point of this channel is not to sell just products, but to build an actual brand. Does you got is no good if you watch this channel and then in 15, 16 months from now, you're starting something new or you aren't in business. I'm trying to help you create a foundation for something that's gonna last you the next 15 to 20 years, which does take more work on the front end. So hopefully the beginning of the video wasn't misleading by me telling you that the 
this was all going to be easy and sunshine and rainbows. There is going to be hard work. And the people who want to become millionaires or DECA millionaires or build something bigger for themselves, build something for their family, their future, they're going to have to put in that work. And this is the foundation to do so. And especially because everyone else is going to be jumping to how do I just start to create and post a couple of things on Instagram and sell them and boost those posts. If you're doing that, great. You're going to make a couple of sales, but you won't build a brand that way. Now, hold up. I just want to say that like if you're a clothing brand owner, if I was right on the person who was actually watching this content and you want to jump into this, to the specifics of your brand and how to grow it profitably, you can schedule a free 45 minute strategy session with us. There are limited spots, honestly. So go find a time now. You can check out the link in the description down below. I've talked to thousands of brands and almost every single one of them are doing it wrong. When I say doing it, you do not need to spend money to make money. That is a common phrase and I honestly want to be controversial here because hopefully you'll you'll be drawn in. If you know your audience and you have worked out a relationship with your manufacturer or you even go the POD route or print on demand route, you do not need to spend money to make money. Listen, I actually do not like print on demand uh, route. I do think it's okay if you do it in the beginning and if you go that route, please hear me. We have worked with a lot of brands, probably 30% of the brands we work with are POD. However, long term, I really want you to get those margins back and I want you to kind of validate yourself a little bit differently. That's the point here is you need to validate your product, meaning that I don't want you to go buy a heat press. I don't want you to go to market and buy something. I don't want you to spend a ton of time consulting with people to help you with your Instagram or a photo shoot. All of that stuff really doesn't matter. It is very difficult to design a product if you don't know who you are creating it for or if you have to outsource your designs to someone else who doesn't understand your audience either. So imagine as a streetwear brand trying to create content for somebody, but you don't know what you're gonna design because you don't really know the audience you're going after. Or imagine going to market and saying, I don't have a strategy for market. I don't know which booths to go to. I don't know which ones are reputable. I don't know what my margins are. And I sure as heck don't know who I'm buying for. I just think that these things look cool, so I'm gonna buy them. And you spend thousands of dollars and you make no money because it's really hard to market something that isn't put together. Now, a dope design will sell, a cool design will sell some products, but it will never build an actual brand. One product can take off. Now, there are the people who are telling me and watching this video right now, I'm the 0.0001% who had something go viral and I sold a bunch of those shirts. Great, but it doesn't mean you're gonna actually build a brand. Maybe it's a good springboard, but most people aren't gonna run into that. So let me show you exactly what I would do to sell these products before I ever spent a dollar. For those of you who've gotten this far, this does not matter if you're already established or you're just starting out. If you want to launch a new collection, do not spend money until you're extremely comfortable with knowing your audience will buy. If you've created a collection or you've had a capsule or something like that and it hasn't, I would say, sold out, you may not know your audience well enough yet. If it hasn't sold out 70, 80%, then you may not know your audience well enough, then go this route. Define who the audience is, like I said earlier. Design this yourself or consult with somebody or research online if you're going to market whatever but design yourself you could use ai you could use dolly uh, which is connected to ChatGPT. shout out to franklin for the connection there or to mid journey it doesn't matter you can prompt something create some kind of design and guess what you'll be able to prompt it better and easier if you know who your audience is okay so create that design or if you're going to go to market again reach out to a couple of the wholesalers Find some designs there, okay? And then send this to 25 people who are your audience because you've defined who your audience is, right? Sending it to friends and family doesn't mean anything if they aren't your audience. And then ask them say you would buy it, okay? So that's number one. If they say, yes, I would buy it, great. Then give them an amazing deal that says, hey, I'm about to make this purchase. I'm about to design these things. I'm gonna give it to you at cost. Basically, find a way to accept those payments. Hopefully at this point, you've already built a, a website or whatever, you can do that for like a dollar from Shopify or even not even launch it. Like if you're gonna sell something, we'll figure out a way, right? You'll, you'll accept payment, make that money. And if you're a boutique or you have a different approach to your clothes, show the products you're selling and then again, follow that same type of approach here, which is go to friends and family and ask them if they would buy it and then specifically say, will you give me that money for it? It is hard, right? Talking to friends and family is probably harder, 
But look, if your friends and family do not want to buy your product and they're being honest with you, they may tell you that they'll buy it, right? That's step one. But if they don't actually give you money for it, then you need to go back to the drawing board. And that's okay too. But at least you didn't waste the thousands of dollars just going and doing it. And I get it. Sometimes it feels like if you go to market or that you go design something, you put it out there and it doesn't work. At least you made progress by buying these things or doing something. You're like making it happen. But really, it doesn't do anything except for cost you money. I want you to start creating content after you figure this audience out though. Okay, so you defined your audience. You've had a couple of sales. Now you've validated it. Okay, so let's start creating content. I'll talk about this a little bit later and send you guys to where you need to go to create content organically. But I want you to create content organically on Instagram and TikTok. Once you send traffic to the site, collect those email addresses and phone numbers for SMS to get your first purchases. Now, the goal here is to get a stranger to buy. So you've got friends and family to buy and you've gotten a stranger to buy. All you're doing is validating that you have something. Then we can put capital or gasoline behind the fire. Then we can go to market. Then we can start to print these products. Then we can go and talk to our manufacturer about buying in bulk or whatever else but it's only after we've validated the product. Again, you don't have to get a ton of sales to say that people actually want it. I really think like you get three purchases from a stranger, that's enough for me to say, hmm, somebody will, somebody else will buy this and we'll go with that. So the approach here, again, just to kind of resurface this is you've got to define your audience with a good margin and you've got to validate the product. When you've done that, everything else starts to make sense. Okay, so now you have an idea of what you need to do to validate your product and a guide of exactly how to do it. It's time to take advantage of free traffic on Instagram. I mentioned that earlier. I think that's probably the best way for you to build an actual following here to drive traffic to the site to generate real sales. So go watch this video on exactly how to do that right here next. All right, y'all, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching the channel. I truly appreciate it. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and have a great rest of your day.